this is what I'm going to do. Um, because I, 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 you know, I try my best to get, you know, stories and news directly out there, but I don't under, I, I don't think people really understand how bad of a situation this actually is. And this is why I wanted to put this before the actual video for anybody that's able to touch this video and hear my voice. You don't even got to watch this video. I just want you to be aware of the situation and I want you to go do your own research on, uh, let me make sure I got the name. It should be East Palestine, Ohio, right? Yes. East Palestine, Ohio train derailment. Even if you don't fully watch the video, go look up the information for yourself. No matter if it's IG, Twitter, TikTok, read every and all information about it so that you can understand how bad this really is. This is a really messed up and it's a really bad situation. I'm talking about everything from farmland to playgrounds, schools, to the sources of water in the creek. It's to the point where one of the towns nearby swapped over their sources of water just as a preventative measure. That should let you know how bad that is. When they decide to swap over their water from where they naturally get it, they already know something is there. And you have people just now getting back to their homes after being told to evacuate for several days because it was a real risk emergency because of the chemicals that were in that air and how caustic and how carcinogenic those chemicals are. So again, this is America. This is this is what we have to to deal with. These are the people that are in power, that are in control, that are here trying to literally destroy your food sources, trying to destroy the soil. They're trying to destroy your water and they're trying to destroy your air. They're trying to literally strip and take every single thing from you. So again, I implore everybody who can hear me. You don't even have to watch the video. Go look up East Palestine. Ohio train derailment and read every single article that they got up there so you'll know and understand how bad this situation is. If you want to support the platform, just in case anything like this happens again, you can do it by way of PayPal, Patreon, uh, Cash App, and also by um, the Anchor. And you can also further support the platform by way of going to the uh, the Teespring store or um, the shoe store that is located in the comment section below. In Norfolk Southern Corp, train appears to have been on fire miles before it derailed in eastern Ohio, putting scrutiny on the safety detectors along tracks that are supposed to alert crews to such hazards. A manufacturer in Salem, Ohio, posted a clip Friday on its Facebook page of video from a surveillance camera, which showed a fire under one of the cars being pulled by the Norfolk locomotive as it passed its facility. The video surveillance footage was earlier reported by the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Norfolk Southern and rail safety officials declined to comment on the video, citing the ongoing investigation. The Salem manufacturer, Butik Bliss, had no immediate comment. Salem is around 20 miles away from East Palestine, where the train containing hazardous chemicals derailed on Feb 3 and resulted in authorities calling for residents to temporarily leave the area. Officials from the National Transportation Safety Board, the federal agency that investigates major rail accidents, have said the 150 car train derailed after an axle malfunction. The NTSB said the crew was alerted to the problem from a wayside defect detector shortly before the derailment. An emergency brake was then applied. The agency is still investigating the accident. Norfolk Southern declined to comment on the detectors in the area and referred questions to the NTSB. The NTSB said previously it will issue a preliminary report on this derailment in about four to six weeks. It also said that its investigation includes when the defect first surfaced and how far out it was before the detectors flagged the defect. Cars involved in the derailment contained vinyl chloride, combustible liquids, benzene residue, and not hazardous materials, such as plastic pellets and wheat. According to the Columbiana County Emergency Management Agency, rail workers say that there are devices placed along freight tracks to detect problems with train components. These include heat sensors, which sound an alarm to train crew when overheating occurs on parts like axles and wheels.
if detectors are far apart, axle bearings could be overheated for a period of time and the train crew may not be alerted soon enough to prevent an accident, said Jeremy Ferguson, president of Smart Transportation Division, the union representing train conductors. When axle bearings overheat, they can disintegrate. So these are some other notes that I was able to take down, right? A Norfolk Southern Corporation train appears to have been on fire miles before it derailed East Ohio. Norfolk Southern and rail safety officials declined to comment on the video, citing an ongoing investigation. Salem is around 20 miles away from East Palestine, where the train contained hazardous chemicals derailed on February 3rd. Cars involved in the derailment contain vinyl chloride, combustible liquids, benzene residue, and non-hazardous materials such as plastic pellets and wheat. Referring to the rails, if detectors are far apart, axle bearings could be overheated for a period of time and the train crew may not be alerted soon enough to prevent an accident. There is no federal regulations requiring the use of heat detectors and health monitoring sensors, according to the Federal Railroad Administration. Silverado Kagan, a hazardous materials specialist, stated that, quote, we basically nuked a town with chemicals so we could get a railroad open. He also stated that the chemicals are carcinogens and upon contact with a person can cause burning and irritation on the skin and eyes. Breathing, breathing it in can also cause irritation to the nose and throat and cause coughing and shortness of breath. A lawsuit seeks medical testing after toxic train derailment. The lawsuit filed Thursday by the Pennsylvania residents calls for the railroad operators to pay for medical screening and related care for anyone living within a 30 mile or a 48 kilometer radius of the derailment to determine who was affected by the toxic substance released after the derailment. The lawsuit also is seeking undetermined damages. Mayor Trent Conway acknowledged people remain frustrated by lingering odors and promised the village is not just taking the word of rail operator Norfolk Southern Railway and has environmental protection agency representatives involved in air testing. The village's drinking water system is being tested daily and is safe. That was stated by the Columbian County EMA director, Peggy Clark, who also stated that the testing takes a half an hour for each home and is being handled by four teams working 10 hours a day. An official with one of the Ohio EPA stated material had entered the waterways and killed fish, but drinking water is safe. He also stated that officials have been sampling water and looking for short term effects as well as long term effects. What is vinyl chloride and what happens when it burns? The gas is used to make polyvinyl chloride, hard plastic resin, and plastic products. It is found in products such as credit cards, furniture, and car parts, but is most notably used in PVC plastic piping, a common material for plumbing. Is it dangerous? Vinyl chloride is associated with increased risk of liver cancer and other cancers, according to the federal government's National Cancer Institute. The effects were studied in PVC pipe makers who breathe in vinyl chloride and develop rare liver cancers. Ruth Lynn stated, who studies car uh, carcinogens at the National Institute of Environmental Health Issues and Sciences. If you worked longer, you had higher risk. And if your exposure levels were high, you had higher risk. Wharton switches water supplies out of abundance of caution. The governor of West Virginia states that the derailed train leaked chemicals into the Ohio River, which led to a town switching to an alternative water supply. In a briefing on Wednesday, Governor Jim Justice stated that the town of Wharton has changed its water supply out of abundance of caution. He also states that the town's officials had acted immediately after they had been notified of the chemical leak. The spill from the ruptured tanker cars would have had to travel through local creeks and tributaries to reach the Ohio River. Hello folks, I apologize for the angle of this video. Obviously I am trying to protect myself somewhat. We are on the cusp of a multi-billion dollar ecological disaster with Norfolk Southern. In previous videos, a lot of people are saying, well, you don't drink that water. And that is true. I do not drink that water. However, there are thousands of residents that will and will do it unknowingly. 
One thing that we need to pay attention to is the fact that every one of those streams feeds Beaver Creek, which feeds the Ohio River, which then feeds populations such as the city of Weirton. I am in the city of Weirton right now. The city of Weirton has since discovering these chemicals, most likely in their water tanks from their pickup, have realized the water is not safe. I'm sure it was evacuated and a new source of water was found for its residents. The problem lies how many thousands of people will run into these chemicals and never know about it. Will your community forget? Will your community not check properly? Will they not have the money or infrastructure to know? Is your community 50, 60 years old and you don't have the modern infrastructure? You know, there are plenty of places that will see damage from this water, whether you are drinking it, cooking with it, or showering in it. The leak is already here. The leak has been here. It doesn't matter that they're cleaning it up now. What has already passed should be the new question. At the end of this short talk, there will be roughly a two to three minute video that I have attempted to not edit in any way whatsoever so that you can see these results in live time. Guys, I'm a blue collar worker. I am not a lab technician. I'm not an environmental specialist. I am a guy that has grown up, lived and owned property here my entire life, just like you. I recognize my voice. I'm the gentleman that has collected a lot of these samples. These have all been carefully tagged. This is the Beaver Creek watershed uh, in regards to these Palestine train crash. This sample I'm looking at today is from By Road. This is probably within about two to three miles of the train crash. This is the closest water that I was able to gather outside of the containment zone. Here on the right side, we have Little Beaver Creek. This is upstream from Beaver Creek before North Fork joins in. So this will be my clean sample of what our water should be. If you take a look at these two containers side by side, you can already see that the one on the left here is not only misty, it has almost the appearance of like a chilled alcohol versus this one on the right that you can see entirely through that just looks like standard water and plastic. We already have some strips done, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you two more. I wanna record this in a continuous video so that there is no questionable doubt. This is a new strip picked at random. Dirty water. We're going to put it in the contaminated water, shake it to make sure that we get all the air bubbles out. This strip will go on the left side with the rest of the contaminated strips. The nice thing is, is that those ones have been cooking, so we have plenty of time to wait to see the results. This is clean water from Beaver Creek. This is what should be in our waterway. This is what our fish should be swimming in. Same test. So now if you look at all of my results here, on the left side, we have the contaminated water in which you can see it is bleaching all of the color out of these squares, not so much actually changing what color they are versus the right side. Look at how picture perfect these strips look. You can see that there is obviously something in this water in large quantity that is being hidden. Just go back to taking a look at these two containers and you decide. All right, so you were able to hear from one of the residents that is located in East Palestine, Ohio. Yeah, I think he said it was Weirden. And um, also in the background, you can, again, see the images, right? So you can see from an airplane, you can see the clouds, right? You can see the, the big black area. Then to the left, you can see the smoke. Then to the right, it almost looks like a nuclear explosion went off. And then at the bottom, it almost looks like Dante's Peak, if you know, you're old enough to see that film. So what you're looking at, which I turned into a GIF format, is another area in Ohio. And these are the environmental people who are there to basically clean up after anything big happens. So the woman stops to the side of the road. She sees them and she's, you know, wondering what it is that they're doing. She knows what it is that they're doing. They're there in order to clean up any evidence of 
you know, what took place with the chemicals in the water. They have to pick up any of the dead uh, aquatic life that is there. So fish, frog, whatever it is, they, they basically, you know, pick it up and they collect it. Um, and they more than likely destroy um, the evidence, but more than likely before it's destroyed, they do and run some tests uh, to see the quality, like how much of whatever chemical is found directly in, um, you know, the body of that amphibious creature. And by way of that, they can then later on tell, like, okay, well, we've had a ridiculous amount of such and such and such and such basically drop here. Uh, we're probably going to have to, you know, pour something, you know, in the water in order to dilute the chemical. That's normally what they do, right? Uh, whenever they happen to have a chemical that may spill or fall into a water, they will pour another chemical agent on top of that in order to uh, clear, clean, or dilute that um that chemical with you know said agent uh the moral of the story is this this is a story that i really didn't hear um you know <coughs> excuse me anything about due to the effect of a lot of other things that's directly out there such as the quote-unquote ufos and everything going on with the biden laptop situation and the pipe from you know russia and you know all this other type of stuff that's magically shown up this is something i i would actually request right you don't even got to really fully pay attention to the video i mean obviously if you made it this far you you pretty much did but I would ask, I'm probably going to put it at the front of the video. I'm going to request anybody that comes in contact with this video to go out there and do their own research to really see and find out how bad this really is. I'm not even really telling you how horrible this really is and, and how this is going to turn out, you know, like uh, 10 to 15 to 20 years from now. Like the, the, uh, the liquid, the chemical agent that was dropped in here is carcinogenic. It's a carcinogen. Like, it can literally give you with enough doses, high, enough doses, it will give you cancer. And this is in water that some people, you know, fish. Some people go in this area and they may hunt. Like, everything is affected. If they have aquifers or anything like that, everything is affected. Farmland, everything is affected. One guy actually had, he had a whole film about roughly about two minutes just looking at the clouds. And he was angry. He was immensely angry because he knew and understood exactly what it is that they did. They polluted the whole land and it was on purpose. Remember in the article, it basically stated from one of the guys uh, who works in the environmental agency, he was like, we basically, you know, nuked the whole town just to open up a few roads. That's pretty much what they did. And there's another video that actually shows on um, dealing with the train derailment that there was a fire set on the railroad before the train even came. So it was already, it was sabotage. It was sabotage. Somebody or individuals deliberately made sure that that part of the track was more than likely going to be warped from the heat. So by the time that the train came around, it was going to cause a derailment, which caused the whole issue that you see here. That's how diabolical a lot of these individuals are. They are willing to destroy they're willing to pollute. They're willing to do a variety of things in order to have whatever control they need over the people. And they already know that a lot of people are not leaving because when you go listen to a lot of the videos, people are like, well, this is my home. I feel comfortable and I know I can actually sleep, you know, at my home in my own bed. Your home, you were pretty much away from your home for about what? Five days, almost to like a week. All these chemicals were basically in the air in your house they're in the ground they're in the soil they're in the water like no matter where you go those chemicals are always going to be there so that means once the kids come back and they start yeah we're going to be playing on a playground those playgrounds aren't going to be scraped of all of those chemicals it's impossible to realistically do it's in the trees it's in the rocks it's in the soil 
It's on the metals. It's on your cars. It's on your houses. It's in your houses as well. Like I said, people got to be, you know, really vigilant and paying attention to the things that's going on. Like I said, go go and, 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 and really look at why it is that this wasn't something that was broadcasted. Go pay attention and figure out why this was something that really wasn't broadcasted. 